Hi everyone and welcome to a sort of mini series, so to speak, where we're going to look at how to create a wave based game mode. So, how to do this. This is similar to sort of like a zombies type game. Um, so we're going to do it in several parts. The first part we're going to look at just straight up just how to do random spawning at spawn locations. And then we're going to be looking at slowly getting into how to uh, determine what is spawned each turn. So you could, the game designer can sort of set up when say the big heavies start popping up and things like that. But let's get started with just the basics of how this works. So for this to work, we need to set up some spawn points for things to start spawning in. So what we're going to do is create a spawn point. So I'm going to create a new blueprint. So I'm going to go add new blueprint class. And I'm going to choose actor. And this is going to be called um, spawn point. Open up your spawn point actor. And as for components go, we mostly only need one thing, and that's going to be an arrow. Okay, and the arrow here is just going to indicate which way things are going to spawn facing in. Okay, so spawn point, pretty much it, that's all there is to it. Um, we'll get to, actually we can do it now, let's do it now. So let's go and... Uh, create the functions that are going to happen on a spawn point so the first function we're going to have is a spawn uh, target I guess we'll do spawn target or spawn, let's do spawn enemy yes, that'd be better. spawn enemy um, so this function is going to get when it gets called will spawn an enemy on this spawn point um, let's actually make an enemy first of all that can be actually spawned so for now we're just going to do just a basic block, nothing special. So I'm make a new blueprint class, another um, actor. Let's do character because it's going to move about eventually. So we'll do a character, do enemy. And our enemy chap here, we're just going to put a box mesh on him. Uh, let's put actually a cone. And there we go. And I'm just going to rotate him like so. Okay, so there's our, so to speak, enemy. So on the spawn enemy function, we're just going to spawn actor from class. And the class we want to choose is going to be enemy. And the spawn transform. We're going to get the spawn points transform location. So transform. We're going to get actor transform. And that will do for us for now. Click compile. And what we're going to do is simply close the spawn point. And if I drag the spawn point in the world, you can see the little arrow appears quite easily like so. Okay. Yeah, I can drag another one in over there drag one more over here and whatever rotation I put on this spawn point will affect the enemy character uh, that'll do for now three will do um, so that does a setup so in your level you'll have these spawn points set up around the map uh, the next job is to hook these up to some game mode logic so that's going to be handled in the well, as you can imagine, the game mode. So let's find the game mode that we're currently using. So here's my first person game mode. Let me open the full blueprint editor. And I'm going to open up the event graph of your game mode. So on the event graph, we're going to set up the game and how it's going to work. So on begin play, right click, begin play. We first of all need to get a job of getting all the spawn points in the entire map. So from the event begin play, drag out here and do get all uh, actors of class. And you want to choose a spawn point class from the drop down. And this thing does as you imagine it would, it gets an entire list, or in this case an array, of all the actors of this particular class inside the map. And um, what it does, we want to store this array as a list. So drag out from our actors and click on promote to the variable. And I'm going to name this one as spawner list. 
like so. Click compile. I'm going to create another custom event on here. Another event, a custom event. And we're going to uh, we'll call this one uh, spawn. Activate spawn. We'll do activate spawner. And the activate spawner is the custom event that's going to that's going to fire when you want the spawner at random to spawn a uh, enemy. So to get a random spawner from this list, we've stored it as a variable. Drag that variable out and choose get. And we want to get the length of this. Actually, first of all, before we get length, let's just show you get uh, a copy so it's get a copy and on get a copy we need an integer and this will be the random value so the value comes from the spawner list's length and from the integer we're going to do the random and you want random integer in range so the minimum for this will be zero and the maximum though will be the length of the array minus one and the reason why we do minus one is because an, an array is zero based meaning it starts at zero so it has a item zero item one item two item three um length doesn't return that it just gives us a number of how many items are in there so if we take one away from it it now become a zero based value so minimum zero maximum where the length is minus one and that's going to return a random integer within the min and the max and that's going to spit out a single spawner so this is our single random spawner and from there we can access that function we made spawn enemy and plug it in like so so how do we actually call this activate spawner well if i drag out after our begin play I'm going to drag out of here and we can go set timer by event and the event you want to drag down to the activate spawner timer wise we want to put a timer on when this enemy spawns so let's say every five seconds and we want it to loop so it just keep on going click compile and let's play so those spawners around here should, there you go, one. Uh, two, there you go. And it's, it may overlap a couple because we haven't done any uh, collision checking stuff. But there you go. Okay, and there's a spawning of enemies on the spawn point. Ah, there you go, it's spawning mock balls. Okay, so that's the basics of it. Um, the next job in the next part what we'll do is we'll start adding in the wave numbers and how many enemies are needed to be killed for per wave for the wave to be over and continue on to the next one uh, but this will do for as a nice introduction to the wave based game mode thanks for watching join us on patreon.com forward slash ryan lady support me and you'll get access to our all of our videos early as well as a discord and many other benefits too so thank you very much for everyone who supporting me thus far it's been great. I couldn't be doing it without you. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time for part two. Bye-bye.